I think it starts from our education, it starts from the home as well, where girls can do engineering, they can take on courses that people think that are meant for men. Hello, this is the Weekly Tradecast, a new podcast brought to you by UNCTAD, the UN's trade and development body. I'm Sarah Toms. We're exploring how major events are shaping trade and development and how that affects billions of people around the world. This week, we're looking at women and Africa's emerging technology industry. There are massive opportunities, but the stigma persists that computing is a male industry. Women are underrepresented and often excluded. For Africa to tap its true potential, stronger and more inclusive support is essential so that women have the skills, capital and opportunities to create viable tech businesses. UNCTAD has appointed E-Trade for Women advocates to help bridge the gender and digital divide. Buram Sop from Senegal and Damilola Oleki Shushi from Nigeria. Two of the new advocates join me today in the studio. Well, Baram, you are a serial digital entrepreneur and your latest venture is Queli, a wholesale sourcing marketplace for products made in Africa. So tell us, why do you think the digital economy is so important for women and particularly women in developing countries? What we're really talking about is being able to have access access to market using technology and just the digital e-commerce platforms in general. An example is like Senegal. It's a very small market. How are you able to grow your business? And so you have to look across the border. Technology is one way to be able to do that without having to move every day. As a woman, we wear different hats. We often are the ones, in most cases, taking care of the children. We cannot afford to travel as much. And so technology is a way to grow their businesses. I see my role as one of being a voice for all of these women in these different communities, being able to express their needs across different agencies across the world. Well, it's a big mission, but tell me a little bit about you. What challenges did you face as a woman in Senegal? Sure. So my background is a little bit different, I would say. Um, I was born in Senegal. I was raised a little bit around Africa and a number of countries before heading to the U.S. And after spending 26 years in the U.S. where I was able to decide on my career, which was in the digital space. I don't believe that that would have happened had I stayed in Africa for college. Even in the US, the digital space becoming a programmer was very new at the time. I was the only woman in my class. And then becoming an entrepreneur in the digital space in San Francisco, I was yet again one of the only women, um, especially a black woman from Africa that speaks an accent. And that made it very difficult to raise funding. And so coming back to Africa, it makes it feel different. I moved back to Senegal three years ago to start a new venture. And it feels like home because mm. I'm not being questioned as to why I am who I am. But there's still a lot of work to be done. I'm not saying easier than the man, but just making it at least as easy as it is for men to start a business, as easy for men to raise some funding. And so my experience has helped me be able to have a voice, be able to feel confident enough to sit around certain tables, be comfortable enough to be the only women in a boardroom around other men and speak at the same level. So what tips would you give a woman who wanted to build something for herself? It's to just do it. The tip is just do it. And it doesn't mean that it will work, but unless you start it, you will never know. And any failure is a learning experience. It will push you in different directions. And as you go into new things, you learn a lot more about yourself. Well, Damilola, you are also a founder, a founder and CEO of Shuttlers, Nigeria's leading technology-driven transportation startup. So not only did you decide to go into the male-dominated tech world, but you also took on a very male sector of transport too. I think it chose me. I didn't set out to go into the industry. 
I had an experience, you know, engineering teaches you about, you know, efficiency, how to make systems and processes more efficient. Because I grew up in a smaller city, I also moved from my university to a busier city, Lagos. So I had a culture shock, how people use public transportation. Buses are very uncomfortable, it's very unsafe for women. Using that kind of system and traveling out of the country for the very first time, mm. okay, was Dubai. And I was shocked to see how people are experiencing smart transportation. And when I came back, I realized that they're not going to do anything about this. Well, you're also behind another initiative that's very supportive of women, and that yes. She Moves Shuttles. Because we realized that a lot of women don't quite have the skills required to compete at the place of work. So we realized that people spend between two to four hours during traffic in the buses. They can turn that underutilized time to learning time. So we aggregated resources and shared that information with them during those shuttles and they were able to learn, you know, we created like courses and master classes for them to also like mm-hmm. interact and mentor each other because we have targeted audience of um, professionals of different work of lives. Now, what opportunities were you offered um, that helped you get your big break? I didn't know that guys do or ladies do. I, I couldn't, do, I was not just aware. I started chemical engineering, so we're maybe like five in the class of like 50 guys. But it didn't seem like I was entering a territory that wasn't meant for females. I realized that, okay, I'm in a different territory, right? So that was my mindset. Now, it's been a difficult time for people with businesses. First, you had COVID and now cost of living crisis. What has been the impact of the crisis on your business? This is why investors will look for great teams, because in times like COVID, what then happened with a business like ours, thought the world was going to an end. But after like a week of reflecting, we realized that we had to reposition ourselves in a way that we could adapt to this new you know, mm. world, right? And we realized that essential workers were still moving, um, but they needed something that was safe. They needed a system where they could guarantee that they were going to clean the buses, um, they were going to use nose masks. So we positioned ourselves as the only option and were able to raise funds. So one quick last question. So many tech companies are dominated by men. What are the broader changes that need to be made in society to empower women in the digital space? I think it starts from our education and starts from the home as well, where girls can do engineering, they can take on courses that people think that are meant for men. But if you have like a pipeline of female developers, female product managers, female quality technology people, you would be able to have solutions that are driven by women as well. The more women that are able to fund other women, the more funding will get to the hands of companies. Thank you to Baram and Damilola, our E-Trade for Women advocates, for joining us today. Tune in to the weekly Tradecast next week and every week for more insights on the most pressing issues around the world of trade and development. There's even more on our website, untad.org. I'm Sarah Thompson-Geneva. Goodbye for now.